You probably don't know this about me, but besides making macarons, tarts, especially individual tarts, are my very favorite things to make. So today, I'm going to start off by showing you how to make a sucre tart dough, and then we're going to get into a really, really easy tart, a lemon tart, um, as I begin this small series about making different kinds of tarts in your home kitchen. So as you see here, I'm dumping some dry ingredients into the bowl of my stand mixer. Of course, you can use a hand mixer as well, but this is going to be kind of a stiff dough, so I do recommend using some kind of mixer. Now, while I did just dump in the almond flour, I am making sure to sift both my powdered sugar and the cake flour because you don't want to go through all this work of creating a beautiful tart and then have a little clump of flour or a little clump of powdered sugar or something as those two things tend to ball up a little bit especially if you live anywhere that has a higher amount of humidity or if you have a bag that maybe has been sitting on the shelf for a while that really can happen so i've both sifted it and then i've gone in with my paddle attachment just to give all those dry ingredients a really good mix before adding in my butter. Now with the butter in here, I'm mixing on a really low speed just so that the butter can completely incorporate with the rest of the flour. If you crank this up, probably things are going to go flying out of your bowl. And we're not trying to cream this butter or anything. What we're trying to create is basically a dry ingredient mixture that is all has all of those dry ingredients coated with some of that butter. So things will start looking a little bit sandy. And when I reach in there, after completely mixing that butter in, even though the texture doesn't look too different right now, if I squeeze my hand together, all of the dry ingredients should come together because of how that butter is evenly distributed now. So everything will press together, squeeze it together, but it will also turn back into kind of a powdery state once I let it go. That is a perfect consistency. After I've reached that point, I'm going to add in my eggs. Now this is where all of the moisture is coming from. So I'm adding in that egg. I'm giving it a good mix and I'm going to mix just until the egg is completely incorporated and a really nice cohesive dough forms. And then I'm going to stop mixing. I'm not super worried about over mixing, but it's also something you want to avoid. So the dough after the egg is completely incorporated should look like this. It's a relatively soft dough. It should be a little bit sticky, but not anything insane, but it's pretty malleable. So now I'm going to get some plastic wrap here on my counter, take all of that dough, plop it into the center, and then I'm just going to use the plastic wrap and my fingers to help smooth this out into a flatter, more rectangular shape. And this is going to help out later once I start rolling this to cut the shapes I need for my tart shells. I've got a label on there, of course, and into the refrigerator it goes for at least 30 minutes or um, a few hours or overnight is fine as well. I'm just going to turn out that tart dough onto my counter. Make sure to use a bit of flour or roll this between pieces of parchment paper or silicone mats or something like that. Otherwise, as you saw, it is quite soft as this starts warming up to room temperature. It is going to get a little bit stickier, especially as you're moving it around. So make sure to use that flour or whatever other things, tools you have on hand to make sure that it doesn't stick to your rolling pin or cutting board. I am just going to roll this out until it's pretty thin. I didn't really measure the thickness of it. It's just quite thin. Um, one thing that I don't have in my home kitchen, but I would recommend, there are these long um, either plastic or wooden sticks that you can find or even sometimes like a rubber it looks like a rubber band that you can put onto your rolling pin and it has a certain thickness so that once you get down to a certain thickness 
you cannot roll down anymore. So it ends up being a really consistent, it's a really, really great tool to have for your dough when you're making cutout cookies or tart shells or whatever else it is that you're rolling out and you want it to be a specific thickness and you want it to be the same thickness everywhere. I really would recommend that. As I said, I don't have that in my kitchen. I just eyeballed it and things turned out just fine. But if you're looking for something to make this an even smoother process, I would recommend looking into that. Once everything is nice and rolled out, I have this really nice, thin, even layer of dough. I'm going in there with a cookie cutter that is the same size as the base of my tart ring that I'm going to be using. Depending on the size of your tart ring, that might be a little bit different for you than it was for me. So please measure accordingly based on the tart ring that you have. And I'm just cutting out a circle for the base with a cookie cutter, or you could use the tart ring you have and a small knife as a guideline if you don't have the perfect size cookie cutter that's totally fine i'm going to get all of these rings of dough onto a sheet pan that i'm going to stick into the refrigerator so that they can keep cool um, otherwise at room temperature they are getting really really soft and i want it to be a little bit cooler when i work with it to make my tart shells so into the refrigerator these will go. Today I'm going to show you a method of using a circle for the base of the tart shell and then a strip for the sides of the tart shell. That's a kind of new method to me. I am even more familiar with cutting a larger circle of dough and then squishing it down into the tart shell, but just as one individual piece. So if that works better for you, absolutely go for that method in your home kitchen. So for the method of having one one circle for the base and then a ring, uh, a strip for the, the sides of the tart shell. Now I'm cutting out as even as I can strips of dough for the sides. Now you have two different ways of doing this. Here I am just cutting exactly the size that I need and I'm going to put it into the tart shell and just leave it alone. Otherwise, I would also recommend cutting it about a half a centimeter wider than you need the strip to be. And then after you put it in, you can freeze it and use a small knife to cut off the excess and that will give you a really, really flush perfect top edge to your tart shell. Okay, so that went into my refrigerator and now that my tart dough is cool again, it's going to be a little bit easier to work with. I'm starting off by putting the edge, that strip of dough into my tart ring. I'm cutting it down to size so it is perfect. Then I'm going in with that circle and because I cut it to the size of the tart ring and now I have a little bit of the dough inside of that, um, there's going to be just a little bit of excess that I need to press into the sides. That is going to help seal everything together. And then I am going to repeat the process for all of my individual tart rings. Make sure to press a fork into the bottom so that nothing bubbles up in the oven and then all of the prepared tart casings are going to go into my freezer. 
I am going to bake the tart shells from frozen. So that is a super important step to do. So even though making tart shells isn't a super difficult thing, as you saw, the recipe for the tart dough is quite easy. There are not that many ingredients. It doesn't take that long. Even rolling out the dough, like that's not too hard. You're just cutting circles and strips there. Um, it's okay, but making sure you have really lovely tart shells is a little bit tricky this whole making the tart shells or casings themselves is a little bit tricky especially because timing and temperature is really important so we had that sucre dough made sure to rest it in the refrigerator for at least 30 minutes if not longer rolled it out got it back into the refrigerator once everything was cut we're making our tart casings, poking the bottom so some, you know, steam can get out, no bubbles will form, and then it's going into the freezer, then it's going to be baked. So there is a lot of in and out of the refrigerator or freezer. So while it's not that difficult, you absolutely can do it. I believe in you. You do need to have some organization, planning, timing, all of that in mind. Then it's just going into the oven to be baked and you're ready to start filling your tart shells. Today I'm going to show you a baked lemon tart filling and because this is going to be then baked, the tart shells are going back into the oven so they are baked but they are not like completely golden brown yet because I know they're going back into the oven. So I'm starting this lemon filling out with some sugar and a bunch of lemon zest and to make sure I get all of the flavor and oils and everything from the lemon zest I'm mixing it into my sugar and I'm going to give that a really good stir so the sugar can absorb all of the flavor it possibly can. If you do not have a microplane as you see me using here in your home kitchen that is a really really important tool in any pastry kitchen. Yes graters are fine like larger whole graters are fine but it is not the same. A microplane is so, so, so important for zesting or grating things that go into pastry dishes, so I highly recommend investing in one of those. So here I'm just stirring all of that lemon zest and sugar together. Then I'm going directly into my saucepan. I've got some whole eggs here. I have got some lemon juice from those lemons that I zested before and then that lemon sugar mixture. I'm going to stir all of this up, make sure the egg yolks and everything is completely incorporated together before getting it over onto a low heat on my stove. Once this is starting to warm up, the sugar has completely dissolved, then I'm going to add in the butter. Now you probably could just dump everything into your saucepan, including the butter at the beginning, but one reason I might recommend waiting like I did here is that if you add everything in, even if you have room temperature butter, the sugar isn't dissolved, the eggs are kind of gloopy, and the, then you have those chunks of butter in there. And if you're whisking, trying to incorporate the eggs and the sugar and get all of that to, you know, dissolve and warm up while you have chunks of butter that is slowly melting, it's just a little bit cumbersome, which is the main reason for this kind of step-by-step -step process. Once everything is in in the saucepan the butter is melted you can whisk really freely i do recommend whisking quite constantly you do not want the eggs to curdle or cook or anything like that so make sure you're using a pretty low heat you're there you're not wandering around multitasking too much now i'm going to cook this until it starts thickening up we're cooking this like we would any kind of curd and well i always recommend using a thermometer in your home kitchen whether you have a physical probe or you have one that you can 
um, kind of shoot the little laser and it will monitor the temperature that way. Um, you can also use a spoon and I'll show you here at the end. Once it has thickened up, you should be able to dip your spoon or spatula or something into the curd, rub your finger down the back and the curd should not be immediately filling up that space or dripping off of the spoon back down into the pan. So I'm just whisking this until it is thick. It is quite hot. We've made sure to cook the egg though. Remember this is a baked lemon tart. It is going to go into the oven. So while temperature in cooking is very important, especially when you're considering both the structure of whatever you're making and health and food safety, this is going to be baked as well. So really, um, if you are using that kind of spoon method, it's still completely okay. We will ensure that this comes up to temperature and those eggs are completely cooked off later on in the oven. So as you know, I put two entire lemons worth of zest into this curd. So both to remove that to have a little bit silkier smooth of a curd and then also just in case there were any little bits of egg or something that cooked and got a little weird, I strained this mixture before putting it into my already baked tart shell casings. I'm filling it up. I went just a little under the top. I wasn't entirely sure if this would puff up at all in the oven, so I was a little bit nervous, but it really just kind of stayed where it was at, so I do recommend going kind of the same level I did if you want to add a lot of meringue on the top or go flush with the top of the tart shell. That would be totally fine. The very last step for these tart shells, which is completely optional and up to you, is a meringue topping. I am going for a Swiss meringue because I just find it really easy to whip up in especially a small quantity. So I've got my sugar and egg whites over a double boiler, heated that up until it was the right temperature, the sugar is dissolved. Now I've transferred that to the bowl of my stand mixer and I'm whipping it to kind of a medium stiff peak. I want it to be a little bit flexible still. Um, and then I'm just going to pipe it on to my cooled tart shells. Now, if you want to flavor the meringue at all, you absolutely can. If you wanted to add in some vanilla extract, or if you want to add extra lemon or anything into that meringue, go for it. If you want to color the meringue, absolutely go for it. This is just like the most classic lemon tart that I'm creating today. So I just went for a regular old meringue. There are a ton of options for piping this, or you could just scoop it on the top and have it be super freestyle. I am really partial to using either a petal tip or a French star tip. I think it's really, really lovely to look at and you can create some really cool designs and still get that glimpse of the lemon from the lemon tart and the um you have the tart crust and you have the meringue and all of those elements are shining through with any meringue topping how can you not give it a little toast either with a mini uh, blow torch or creme brulee torch whatever you have available to you and then you are done the two things I want to make sure you remember about making these lemon tarts. Number one, don't start piping your meringue until you've let the lemon tart cool. So do not do this immediately upon it coming out of the oven. Wait at least 30 minutes. 
And then also tarts, unlike macarons, which I'm always making, are a lot more time sensitive after they are finished. You will want to make sure to consume this within the next two days. Otherwise, the structure um, of everything, of the meringue, of the tart shell, of the lemon filling is really going to start deteriorating in a way that's not so lovely. The shell is going to absorb all the moisture from the filling. The meringue is going to deflate and get a little weird. So yeah, make sure to enjoy these as quickly as you can. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little look into uh, making a pretty basic individual tart. I have two other tart recipes coming your way this summer that I'm so excited to share with you. So make sure you're subscribed and following along here on YouTube. And you can find me over on Instagram at Maddie Brame as well to make sure you're not missing out on any of my future tutorials or recipes. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.